Hi, Jeff Spira here again, and I'm going to talk to you today about, yes, you really can build a boat. And what I'm going to talk about mostly today is the free study prints and how to read them and what that really means to you. I'm going to talk about boat loading here um, and the number of people that, I mean, I get a lot of emails that say, how many people can this boat hold? Can it hold six people? Well, I don't know. Are they sumo wrestlers or are they little kids? I, it kind of depends on a lot of things. So um, I'd like to uh, show you where you find the free study prints. They're available for all of my boats. They're um, on the boat information page. And uh, for instance, if I go to the uh, Carolinian page, um, you see right here, um, and we scroll down to uh, this section here and we click on it and we see that there are two sets of, um, of study prints available. There's the uh, metric set and the uh, imperial set. I call it the imperial set. It's not really, it's really the American uh, English uh, dimensional version. Uh, that use American style lumber and the uh, metric set uses uh, actually uses Australian style lumber. You may have different sizes of lumber in your country. Um, I had a long discussion uh, with one of my customers uh, in Australia and he said, you know, we don't call it lumber, we call it timber. <laughs> I said, okay, great, I'll call it timber. It doesn't matter to me. And, uh, and he told me what the standard sizes were that he could buy in his local, uh, uh, you know, uh, wood, you know, like Home Depot kind of, um, uh, you know, home improvement store or, uh, or lumber yard uh, where, he, where he comes from. So... Um, I, I'll assume that you have the same or similar sizes in, uh, in Europe uh, as you do in Australia. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the case, but it may be different. Uh, I know that there are different sizes in places like um, the Philippines and um, places like that. But, um, but, you know, in most of the U.S. and Canada and Mexico, they use is standardized, uh, you know, American sizes. Uh, they may call it something different up in Canada, but uh, it's the same lumber. It's made to this mill to the same size to build houses and such with. So uh, it's all, it should all be the same. Okay, so um, let's open the, uh, the English plans uh, and take a look at those. So we get a, a picture. Th these are the actual first two drawings of a set of boat plans that uh, from from my site. So if you were to buy the plans, it would come with the, these exact two drawings. Now, sometimes the drawings have been updated and not the study prints, but I, but in general, they're exactly the same drawing. So, uh, and it gives a, a, a two view picture of the boat. Um, uh, I could include the third. I actually do draw it when I design the boat. I design, I, I draw the third view, the front view, front and back view. Um, but uh, I don't include those on the plans just because I don't know that they'd be useful for you on, on these drawings. Again, I use those to create the additional drawings in the back that go with it, but um, it's not particularly useful to have on here. And I also uh, give you some basic dimensions here. Um, I also give you a depth dimension if you take a look. Um, um, this, is the, uh, this is the maximum displacement uh, depth. So this would be fully loaded, the boat fully loaded. Now if we go down to the um, specifications page, there's two things I, wanna, I want you to pay attention to. The first of them is called the... Um, maximum displacement and that's the uh, the maximum amount of load that this boat can have and that includes the weight of the boat the weight of all the you know gear you have an engine and all that the weight of all the people the weight of all the you know adult beverages you bring aboard everything uh, the fuel everything goes into that total load and that is my recommended maximum load for this boat can you exceed it? Yeah, you can. Um, 
I wouldn't. I mean, it's 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 what I've determined is the most safe, you know, for maximum safety. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go much over that if 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 at all. But it can be done, and it you know it is done sometimes. So, um, but it'll the boat. Believe me, the boat will sink down in the water more. So if you add if you add more weight, it will sink into the water deeper. So. Um, Anyway, the maximum displacement uh, is constituted of the boat weight, and that it depends on the weight of the material you use, and the sizes of material you use, the number of layers of glass, and so on. The engine weight, how much, how much it weighs. I mean, I, I have no idea what you're going to put on it. Are you going to put a seven and a half horse uh, two-stroke that you can, you know, probably weighs forty pounds, or are you going to put a, you know, six-cylinder uh, um, you know, Chrysler flathead in there, you know, that might weigh 400 pounds. I, I, I don't know. So you have to figure those things out yourself. It also includes whatever superstructure you're going to add to it. That would be seats or center consoles or, or cabins or things like that that you're going to add. Um, also, whatever gear you have, that would be the batteries, the electrical, the anchor and chain, um, any bilge pumps, electronics, and so on. Any gear that's going to be permanently attached to the boat needs to be added into that, needs to be included in that number uh, of the, to equal the maximum displacement. Again, it also includes the fuel. So if you have 20 gallons of fuel, it typically weighs you know, 6 pounds a gallon. So that's an additional 120 pounds that are going to be added to the boat when you launch it, that won't necessarily all be there when you come home, but it, um, it, it typically includes the fuel weight. Um, it also includes the load weight, and that's, you know, fishing tackle, sandwiches, adult beverages, anything you bring aboard, um, that, you know, with you on the trip, and all the people. So um, let me give you an example here. Here's a Mission Bay um, it's an 11 foot stitch and glue skiff, weighs, I don't know, 60 pounds, something like that. And it made out of quarter inch ply um, with one guy aboard and it's got a motor on it and everything. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's loaded up there, you know, it's, it's up near its maximum load. Here's another mission bay, exact same hull, um, exactly the same materials used to make it. Um, and it's the same empty weight. And it's got four people aboard. You can see it's got room for more. So, um, so it kind of depends on how big a people you're talking about. So, again, people ask me, I'd like to carry four people on this. Will it take it? I, I don't know. <laughs> what kind of people are they? Are they sumo wrestlers or are they, uh, you know, little kids? You know, it, it, it varies. It depends. So. All right, now we go down a little bit more, and there is a section here called the hull weight. Now, this is a calculation I make, and I do it when I design the boat. <laughs> and it's based on my estimates, and, it, and it's typically based on using Douglas fir as a boat building material. Now, Douglas fir, uh, let me throw up a wood density table here so you can kind of see um, different woods and, and uh, what they recommend. You can see there's some differences here. There's some differences in the lowest to highest. Well, the highest weight typically Douglas fir can be is 44 pounds per square inch. That's the top of the, of the chain for that. And I typically recommend using um, um, a construction grade lumber. So that's a common lumber out here, out west here. I doubt if you'd find it in, in the east. You'd probably find southern yellow pine or, or some, other, some other material, um, cypress in some cases. Um, and uh, th those would be, have different weights. You know, Typical cypress is like 26 pounds per cubic foot. So it's, it's like half the weight of Douglas fir. So the hull is going to be a lot lighter if you use cypress instead of Douglas fir. I use Douglas fir because there's a lot of Douglas fir out here in the West Coast where I am, uh, and it's a common lumber available out here, so it's uh, it's a good boat building material, and um, and so that's why I, I use it as a sample weight. Now I also calculate these weights using um, using white oak and mahogany, so um, 
So I, I have another number in, in my calculations that I, that I work from uh, just to see, uh, you know, how much more it can be. But typically this number on my boats is, um, is, uh, is out of Douglas fir, and it's pretty conservative because Douglas fir is pretty heavy compared to many of the other woods you're going to run across. So um, the, my numbers tend to be heavier, and I do that for your safety. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't fudge them much. I, I, I kind of tell how heavy this whole thing's going to be um, in the worst case scenario, because I think that'll be the, the least possible um, issues that you're going to run across. So um, guys ask me all the time, um, can I make it lighter? Well, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, can you use thinner ply? Well, you know, my ply that I, that I design around is ABX fir plywood. So ABX has knot holes, uh, I'm sorry, ACX plywood. So the C size has, um, has knot holes. So there's big chunks of wood missing. The ends also have, uh, or the interior plies, let's put it this way, also have voids. Um, and that's typically the difference between uh, fur and marine ply is that, that the marine ply doesn't have voids and it doesn't have um, knot holes. Those are all filled and, uh, and, and the, uh, there are no voids in the inside ply. So, so the, the Douglas, the, the standard ply I recommend, yeah, it's too thick if you're going to use good ply. So my typical recommendation is that you don't go out and buy um, marine ply. I mean, unless you're not going to glass the boat, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it. Um, I would use, uh, uh, exterior glued, um, hardwood ply because hardwood ply doesn't really have voids or any, any weak spots because of knots and things like that. Uh, typically the only difference between, I mean, it's the same glue used in exterior ply as it is in marine ply. Um, but the um, marine ply just doesn't have the void. So take that into consideration. So yeah, if you go, if you want to make the ply thinner and make the boat lighter, go for it. Just use a better grade of ply. What about the lumber or the timber? If you, <laughs> if you happen to live elsewhere other than the U S and Canada, um, yeah, you can go thinner on it. Uh, typically, I, I um, specify two by fours, which, as most of you know, are not two inches by four inches. They're sawn to two inches by four inches, and then they're milled down smooth, and they're typically one and a half inches thick by three and a half inches wide. Um, and that's that's what I you know typically expect, but. Remember, this is construction grade, so you can have damage to it. Um, and and it's, I design them around the potential of having a knot hole in the edge, for instance, or something. Um, you know, so yeah, you can absolutely go to thinner lumber if you wish. Um, all of my boats, you can go down to five-fourths lumber. Again, it needs to be better grade lumber. You don't want to have any any um, knots in the edges, you know, you can have, you can have um, firm knots in, in, within the body of it, but, but nothing near the edges. So, um, but you can go full one inch, uh, full five force is milled down to one inch finished uh, thickness. So you could go down to five force with any of my boats uh, without any issue. Um, and that's a, you know, that'll save quite a bit of weight because you go from one and a half inch to one inch thick. So that, that saves quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of lumber instead of the two by lumber I call out. Um, you can also, um, you know, some people build them actually heavier than, than they're recommended to. And they do that, um, they do that by adding glass. You know, I, I typically on most of my boats, I say two layers of, uh, of six ounce, uh, glass, um, it, it, with epoxy on the outside only. And, um, that, uh, that makes a good, strong 
puncture resistant uh, hull and uh, and it, it uh, seals everything up and it's a it, it it strengthens the whole structure quite a bit so it's it's uh, typically good but some people want to go more they want to go three layers or they want to use 10 ounce uh, maybe three or four layers of 10 ounce and it'll make it uh, it'll make it a good stout boat if you do that but you're going to add weight as you do it so just keep that in mind now the other thing that the um, the hull weight does not include is any superstructure so um, if you were to put s simple seats on it they don't weigh much you know simple you know thwart seats they, they weigh almost nothing you know a dozen pounds or so you know so, not very much some a lot of people put center consoles on them and they can be small um, simple you know lightweight or they can be large and heavy and uh, like that so some guys elect to put wheelhouses on them. This, this particular wheelhouse is, um, is included in my uh, ply on frame manual. The, the drawings of it are, are included in there. Um, these can be sized up uh, to, to meet the boat needs and everything else. Um, or you can put a full cabin on it. Um, here's an Albion with, uh, you know, it even has an air conditioner in it. You know, it's, uh, it was built in Louisiana and... Uh, um, takes up a lot of space and uh, uh, so it uh, you know it, it can be you can you can put all kinds of things on them you just have to count in the weight make sure you you add those weight into the your displacement um, you can put cabins on any of my boats almost none of them come with any seats or uh, cabins specified some of the bigger ones show cabins but um, but you can put, I mean, if you want to put a full cabin on a eight foot, uh, you know, back bay, by all means, you know, have at it. Just don't exceed the maximum displacement. Um, and you'll also find it's a horrible sail. and It'll knock you right over. I mean, you'll be spending most of your time over sideways, <laughs> gurgling for water, trying to get out of the thing. <laughs> so, uh, but any of my boats can have a cabin. So um, you can extend the cabins, make them longer, make them shorter, make them uh, build it without a cabin. Some people say, ask, you know, they send me a note, said, can I build this without a cabin? Yeah, all of my designs are designed to be, you know, the hull alone is designed to be strong enough and stiff enough to for all kinds of use. So, um, anyway, I'm just, just don't exceed the maximum displacement. Anyway, that's what's in this specification uh, folder. It also talks about horsepower, but I'm going to make that in another um, uh, another video. And I'm also going to have a number, another video about page two, which includes the uh, full uh, materials list and talk about costs and, and what type of material and all that. I mentioned a few items here about making things lighter, but um, mostly this is about load. So... Um, anyway, that's the story and, uh, I appreciate you, uh, stopping by and, uh, be sure to, uh, subscribe to this channel and ring the bell and, uh, you know, I'm looking to build up my subscription base and hope you find this information useful on YouTube. Um, this is also going to appear on my website and my YouTube page, and I'm probably going to put it on Facebook as well. So, uh, anyway. Have fun, and if you want a boat, stop by to my website. I'll put a link down below of where my website is. I've got uh, 107, I think, uh, boat designs on there now. And I'm trying to add more every day. So anyway, stop by, say hi, drop me a note if you wish, and we'll talk to you again soon.